Hey mama, our babies are a third of a year old. Can you believe it? Here is your 16 week update. Now, if you've been watching these videos, you know I've been talking a lot about the fourth month sleep regression, and I'm happy to report that I think we have passed through it, yay! And it's so funny, because with my Paloma, it was the same thing. It lasted just around this time, it hit early, and we got through it. So hopefully, yours will go quickly too if you have to go through one. Um, and because right now, as we speak, I have to say, little baby Faith is upstairs bridging two nap cycles together, yay! Because that's the brutal thing about the fourth month sleep regression, it doesn't only affect their nighttime sleep and your nighttime sleep, but also their daytime sleep. And what was happening was the Faith was just taking these little cat naps, 45 minutes, all throughout the day. So she was taking like five 45 minute naps a day. And what I find happens is then she gets really fussy because she's not getting that deep restorative sleep that happens when you put together at least two sleep cycles. So um, if your baby is getting up at like 40, 45 minutes, what you can do is you can sneak up there before they wake up. So like 40 minutes or even 35 minutes, depending on when they've been getting up and then kind of like comfort them a little bit. You can just put your hand like on their chest and kind of rock them a little bit. If that doesn't work, you can even pick them up and kind of rock them back down. You can dream feed them. But the point is, do what you can to bridge two sleep cycles because sleep begets sleep. And I find if I can get one good nap out of her during the day, then she sleeps better at night. And the good news is she is sleeping better at night. She's not waking up. If she does, it's just once she nurses and goes right back down. So do know that the fourth month sleep regression does pass. The other thing that was kind of different this week was I tried some more dairy. Now, if you watch some of my earlier videos, you know that I cut out dairy from my diet. I'm a breastfeeding mom and I did this with all my children because what I find is that they're gassier and fussier when I include dairy. And this is a very popular food to eliminate. It's the only food I eliminate. I really learned it with my first kid because Griffin used to projectile vomit a couple times a week. And I'm like, why is he doing this? And you know, people were like, oh, it's normal. And I'm like, I don't think this is normal. And so my mom said, try not doing dairy. I did that and it went away and he never threw up again. So anyways, my point is I tried to test the waters because she's four months now I'm like okay let's see how she does on you know the dairy proteins going through the milk or whatever is irritating her so I got the gentlest dairy I could possibly find which was a goat kefir because goat milk molecules are smaller and it's, sometimes it's easier to digest for um, babies and for adults and drank it and sure enough within like gosh, 12 hours, she started kind of spitting up more and just, you know, I would put her down on her activity mat or something, look, and there'd be this little stain of like curdled milk and it's just not agreeing with her still. So um, I'm going to put that on the back burner for a while. I do think it's good to challenge babies and to like try and test and do these little spot checks um, because it is good for them to be exposed to allergens to build up their immunity. But as my husband says, you now he's a Wisconsin native, so that is the dairy capital of the country. <laughs> so he's like, you are so sacrificial, you know, because it is really hard not to have dairy. I miss it. And I'm not even like a huge consumer of it, but I love yogurt. I love kefir and some cheese. I mean, are you kidding me? That's delicious. There's just has this the sense of satiation that it gives me. And I think it's all the minerals in it or whatever, because I can eat a ton of nuts and coconut cream and avocados, and it just does not cut it the way dairy does. So I'm excited to try it again. Uh, with Griffin, it was six months was the magic time. And with Paloma, I can't remember, but hopefully maybe five months Faith can handle it. So we'll see. So just as we got this sleep thing figured out, now I'm going to introduce her to the sleep sack, which will probably put us back at square one. But she is getting to the age where I have to start looking at, at alternatives to swaddling because she's rolling now, you know, and she's getting more consistent with it from front to back and back to front. So what I've been doing is I'm still swaddling her, but I do it really loosely um, so that she can bust free. And she's she's very strong on her stomach and on her tummy and stuff like that. So I'm trusting that that's safe right now, but it, it's getting to the point where I need to look at other things. The problem is when I look at these sleep sacks and different things, they're so huge. I'm like, oh, so she's in that weird in-between time. Um, but nowadays they have some really cool alternatives. Like they've got a weighted sleep sack that's supposed to be really comforting. It's kind of the idea of like a weighted blanket. Um, of course, it's really gentle so it's not harmful to the baby, but it just gives them a little added sense of security. They also have something, I think it's called like a zippity D or zippity do, and it's a sleep sack swaddle hybrid that's 
safe for a rolling baby, but also more containing than a traditional uh, sleep sack. So I looked into that, I actually purchased one. I purchased the small and it was still massive for her. So I had to return that. The other one that's really popular is something called the Merlin Sleep Suit. And it's like a real, it looks like literally like the Puff Man, like it's really bulky and big, um, but it's supposed to be safe. And again, it's weighted. And it's supposed to be an absolute lifesaver, particularly for babies that were in like really tight bassinets or the rock and play. They find that this can really help them get into a crib because it makes them feel cozy. Uh, so I ordered one, again, huge. I don't know if my baby's just like a petite baby or what, but it was way too big. And we live in Florida, so it's gonna be way too hot. She'd be sweating her tail off in that thing. So we'll probably net out with just a basic sleep sack. That's what all my kids end up in anyway. And honestly, with Paloma and Griffin, they were in one at five months all the way to three years old. I have these ones that are literally like this big and they're so soft because they've been washed a million times, but they're so easy. They're warm, but they're not too warm. They're a wearable blanket. You don't have to worry about any kind of safety issues and they're just fantastic. So something you might want to look into. Hi, I'm Genevieve Howland, AKA Mama Natural. And this is my third baby, Faith. Together, we'll be taking you through baby's first year. So be sure to sign up for your free updates at mamanatural.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much and we'll catch you next week.